force a rape or incest victim to carry a pregnancy to prove? Uh, it doesn't require that at all because, uh, obviously, uh, it provides uh, at least six weeks uh, for a person uh, to be able to uh, get an abortion. Senate Bill 7 is about voter security, not about voter suppression. And I'm tired of the lies. The COVID is spreading, particularly uh, most of the numbers are with the unvaccinated, and the Democrats like to blame Republicans on that. We have a saying around here, WTF is going on in Texas. In Texas, as you just saw, the out-of-touch, deadly, divisive rhetoric of Texas's Republicans. That's why my old friend Matthew Dowd, former George W. Bush chief strategist in an announcement today, says he is running for Texas lieutenant governor as a Democrat to restore the values and soul of Texas against those Republican leaders and bills statewide that he says have failed and have embarrassed all Texans. Of the Republican he's trying to unseat, Matthew says this, quote, Dan Patrick, the current LG, has repeatedly lied, misled, and waged a hateful culture war against us, endangering each of our lives, but especially the most vulnerable, whether it be on the pandemic, the failed electric grid, voting rights, guns, or equality for all and access to health care. Joining us now, Matthew Dowd. Matt, I want to get to the politics and I want to get to Texas, but I, I want, for people who don't know you, you have such a well-rounded life experience that I think you bring to all analysis. You certainly brought it to campaigns and you brought it to wearing your heart on your sleeve when you very publicly broke with George W. Bush and you come to it as a human and a friend and a dad. And I want to hear about how that drove you to do what you did today. Well, I, I appreciate that, Nicole, a lot. And it, it was a it was a hard decision to come to because both of us know how tough politics is, especially today. And and I'm sure you have. I have just by speaking out, have gotten death threats, which I'm sure will increase from from the Trump supporters and people that don't like the fact that I've been critical of this. As you know, I have four kids, three sons and a daughter. <clears throat> I've buried two in the course of this. I love this state. I mean, I love Texas. I wasn't born here, but I got here almost 40 years ago. But I hate our politics, and I hate what the GOP leadership is doing. And it's not only the rhetoric and the tone and all that, which is very hateful and cruel, but it's the actual policies that are hateful and cruel and undemocratic here. It's hurting people. It's hurting people every single day. Uh, it's hurting people. It's hurting women. It's hurting people of color. It's hurting people without health care. It's hurting people that depend on the energy grid. It's hurting people every single day. And it's a front to me. Texas right now is the front and center attack on our democracy. And at some point in time, we have to ask ourselves, don't we want integrity? Don't we want public service? And don't we want people that are servant leaders that serve the public good? This is not something I can do alone, Nicole. Um, it's something that I have to do as a we, even though the people that have governed in, in Texas, the lieutenant governor has all been about me and himself and the 5% that he appeals to. And so I, I can stand here and say, I'm running, which I am. And I'm gonna, for 405 days, I'm gonna tell the truth about Dan Patrick, and I'm gonna tell the truth about what the Republicans have done. But in the end, I win based upon whether Texans believe that we can actually win the soul of our state and re-engage um, re democracy again, because right now it's fragile. Matthew, as a strategist with whom I worked alongside, I, I understood this about voters. One, they don't like to be lied to, and two, they want to see government deliver. The current Republican Party breaks those rules. The Republicans lie to them all the time. It would seem Republicans knew Donald Trump was a big fat liar. They stayed with him. Many of them are still with him. Um, and in terms of delivering, I mean, Texas has delivered gun laws that endanger all Texans. It's been AWOL on COVID protections that's killed Texans. It's taking away reproductive freedoms, which has Texas women and couples in some instances fleeing the state for health care. I mean, how do you undo what is really an upside down dynamic in terms of how traumatized and sort of Stockholm syndrome Republican voters feel about their failed leaders? Well, you can't really do a lot about Republicans. And as I say, that's what the, the, the governor and this lieutenant governor, who actually, I believe, the lieutenant governor, and so people understand the lieutenant governor in Texas is an incredibly powerful office. They basically run the legislature, and Dan Patrick has run it like a dictator. So all of these things that have gone through and the things that haven't done are in his hand. 
He's done them. He's forced senators to do exactly what he wants to do. And so, again, I think it's the only way we can start speaking to people like it's authentically. I'm going to tell people the truth. Some people may not like it, but I'm going to tell them the truth in the course of this. I'm going to show them who I am, what values I have, why I've loved raising my children here, why I've lived here, why I care about this state, what is so fundamental about this state that I love. And one of the things is diversity of the state. But every single step of the way as we've watched this. And again, if you had asked me this question on January 1st, would I, was I going to run statewide? I would have laughed and said, no way. But after what happened on January 6th, and then after what's gone on over the last nine months in Texas, to me, I feel I have no choice but to go out there and spend every day telling the folks, telling voters, talking to them about, we don't have to put up with this anymore. We don't have to put up with this anymore. And the way to end it is engage and vote these people out of office who don't stand for what we stand for. Matthew, what is it about sort of your your life in Texas politics? And, and, and explain how you came to work for George Bush. You worked for the Democratic lieutenant governor in the state, right? Talk, talk about that and talk about precisely what the issues are that you're going to sort of go out and, and talk to Texas voters about. Sure. So just so people have a sort of history lesson, I came here. The first one of the first jobs I had here when, when I came to Texas, I worked for the Texas AFL CIO in Texas on behalf of workers. My second job was for the Texas Democratic Party. Then I worked for Texas Senator, U.S. Senator Democrat Lloyd Benson, who had been, then was picked on the ticket with Mike Dukakis. And then I got to know Bob Bullock. I ran Bob Bullock's first campaign and his second campaign for lieutenant governor. He was the last Democratic. It was the Democratic lieutenant governor in Texas. I also helped in that 90 race, Ann Richards, win the race for governor of somebody that we all look back on, on fondly in this. And so that I was, I was for years in that trope, got to know Bush personally. I actually liked what Bush had done. He worked with the, my friend, Bob Bullock, who's a Democrat. He worked with the Democratic speaker. And my thought was, if we could do what we did in Texas in the 90s up in Washington, it would be a much better place. It didn't turn out that way. And as you know, I had a public break with the president over the war and some other issues in this. And it became very public on the front page of the New York Times. And so my movement has always been, I always pride myself I think, on, no matter the consequences, trying to tell the truth and trying to relate to people what's going on, regardless of your party affiliation. As I said, I think the only vehicle today to save the republic is the Democrats. And in my view, I think campaigns are always about values. And campaigns are won and lost around values. And I think Democrats sometimes make the mistake of putting out 10-point policy positions on X, Y, and Z. And I'll have many different positions policy positions on it. I'm pro-choice. I'm pro-gun reform. I'm pro-voting rights. I'm all of those things. But in the end, voters want to know what your values are. And my, in, in my view, it's about reinstating the idea of public service and servant leadership and the idea of telling the truth and being honest with each other and looking out for everyone. Though I might disagree with a number of people, looking out for every single person in the course of this and doing the job government should do like in the midst of a pandemic, whereas you know, I lost water, I lost power for eight days, had to move into a hotel, then move into a guest bedroom, and the government didn't respond and didn't care. And you know what they did? The only thing they passed was made it easier for corporations to charge consumers more. That's what their end result of this was. So I'm going to explain all that, show people my values, show people who I am, and it's going to be up to the Democrats if I'm the nominee. And even if I'm not the Democratic nominee, I'm going to spend the next whatever the nominee days, 200 days after that, saying the exact same thing. Because this is about removing this cruel and craven leadership, starting with the starting with the with Dan Patrick, the Republican lieutenant governor, and I will go all the way through the next 400 days doing that.